have seen him go into heaven. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, Lord Jesus. The end of the revelation of St. John the Divine. violence for civilians in Iraq is now 58 times higher than before the United States invasion. Unofficial estimates of civilian deaths have varied from 10,000 to over 37,000, both from collateral damage from our extensive bombing campaign and from the insurgency we have indirectly created by our own preemptive invasion. Just see or one of several other cities for various estimates. And I'm here to say to you, my friend, if you were living in Iraq or in Iran or in the Middle East or in any of these countries where the Muslims are domineering or any other part of the world and uh, your leaders using weapons of mass destruction or seeking them, do you not sense the terror that is being stricken in the hearts of the average person? No, what we have here, my friend, is a no-win situation. According to President Bush, the primary reason we remain in Iraq is to establish a democracy. The man writing this article says he must think we're stupid. Where does he get the idea that a democracy is somehow sacred. Where does he get the idea that he can usurp the limits of the Constitution to which he gave an oath and order the invasion of a nation without the Congressional Declaration of War that the Constitution mandates? Where does he get the idea that it's noble to sacrifice thousands of American soldiers to establish a democracy in a country whose people, uncoerced, probably wouldn't vote for a democracy and certainly wouldn't die for one, might doesn't make right. A vote doesn't determine right from wrong. What is the basis of right and wrong? God is the arbitrator of right and wrong, and he has given us his revelation in the Holy Bible. What does the Bible have to say? about a democracy. In one of the first attempts at a democratic vote in scripture, the ground opened up under the majority who tried to oust Moses. They were swallowed alive down into the pit of hell. Numbers chapter 16. A democratic vote is fine as long as they vote for what is right. But when the democratic consensus prefers to violate God's will, they have voted for something that is unlawful and something that will ultimately bring God's wrath upon them. Why does a democracy tend to evil? Why the scriptures tell us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. People are sinful and unrestrained by the law of God. They will vote sinfully. Abominations that God said should be outlawed will be legalized. And the law without which men cannot be free will be traded for false religion, government hands out, and ultimately tyranny. We're watching that take place now throughout the world as they're voting for these gay rights, as they call it. Oh, my friends, God is nowhere considered in these abominable practices under a democratic process. As a stronger centralized form of government will be voted, the lesser of two evils in cities ridden with crime and terror and corruption. The adventure of self-government and liberty will be traded for the cage of security 
and a Caesar who thinks he's God. There is nothing virtuous in a democracy. Or the contrary, a raw democracy is more likely to tend to evil when the majority of the people are evil than other forms of government. A benevolent monarch who rules with the Bible as his guide is much more pleasing to God and would much more likely bring peace to a society than a democracy where the majority of the voters are sinful. Who would you rather have rule you? King Josiah, 2 Kings 22-23, or American voters? The will of the people does not reign. The God of the Bible does. He may reign with the cooperation of the democracy or the monarchy, but he is the ultimate governor of the universe, judge of nations, and his kingdom is not hindered. When the democratic consensus votes to rebel against God's rule, to violate his law with impunity, the votes for leaders who propagate sin in our nation, these people are making war with God. The Constitutional Republic that our forefathers crafted was an ideal form of government designed to maximize our liberties and minimize our potential for evil. But that form of government is only as good as our devotion to God and His laws. As the forefathers warned, the liberties of our Constitutional Republic are only as secure as is our moral strength. The Constitution presupposes a moral people because an immoral people will violate God's law and their Constitution and will cheer to see it violated. Our nation and our world has only degraded more and more into a democracy because our leaders are in the likeliness of their sinful constituents. They violate the Constitution to which they gave an oath, and a godless citizenry has not held them accountable. The Bible, the Word of God, says that when the wicked rule, the people mourn. They will be oppressed. They will be obsessed. But when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. Their form of government notwithstanding. We have assumed that if Iraq could just draft their own constitution, vote for their leaders, then they would be more free. This is not necessarily true. While under Saddam's reign, Iraq was one of the most liberal nations in the Middle East, with more righteous freedoms than most nations in the region. However, due to the rise of Islamic fundamentalists in post-world Iraq, Christians are leaving for Jordan and Syria by the tens of thousands. The Iraqi Constitution, Section 1, reads, Islam is the official religion of the state, and it is the main source of legislation, and it is not allowed to make laws that contradict the fundamental teachings of Islam and its rules. And this constitution is to preserve the Islamic identity of the majority of the Iraqi people. Wow. And we call that a democracy? I have read a letter recently, writes a brother, from an Iraqi pastor who was leaving Iraq with his family because of the threat proposed to them by the American-endorsed constitution. Islamic fundamentalism was held in check by the secular leader Saddam Hussein. But after an American invasion, a popular constitution, and a democratic vote, the Islamics are gaining power and the Christians are targets. Iraqi Christians are not as free and peaceful under American instituted democracy as they were under Saddam's dictatorship. If Iraq is to be free and have peace, they must avoid raw democracy at all costs, just as they must avoid a theocracy based upon the Koran. Both are evil and tend to evil when the majority of the voters are evil. There will be no peace for Iraqis unless they repent of their Allah idolatry and turn to the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, who alone died to set them free.